if we can go ahead and jump into our next session. We're looking at the relationship of food and sake, and we've got some incredible chefs and beverage specialists joining us today uh, from the western side of the United States. So if we can tune in here. Is everybody there? Are you all hearing me? Yes. Loud and clear. We got everybody? Hey, there they are. There they are. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, for this Thank you so much for getting up and joining us this morning. I really, really appreciate it. Sorry for the little technical trouble uh, as we were getting started here. Um, I want to make sure we go around and introduce everyone here, uh, but I want to, I think I will turn it over to our moderator for this session, uh, Ms. Sachiko Miyagi, uh, the sake expert at T Tipsy. Uh, good morning, Sachiko. Ohayou gozaimasu. Ohayou gozaimasu. This is uh, 3 p.m. in Los Angeles. That's right. But That's I'm right. happy to join you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we, are, we have a fantastic uh, lineup here this morning. Um, we are joined by uh, Chef uh, Nobuo Fukuda uh, from Teeter House uh, in Arizona. Uh, Chef Fukuda, good morning, good afternoon. Thanks for joining good us. Afternoon. Good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu. Ohayou gozaimasu. Thanks so much. Great to see you. Um, yes, I'll, I'll finish my oh. And along with Chef Soma over at Hanyato and Kamonegi in Seattle. Good morning, afternoon. Ohayou gozaimasu. Ohayou gozaimasu. Lovely to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. And last but certainly not least, we have the team at Shibumi uh, down in LA, uh, Chef David Schlosser. Uh, along with their beverage director, Christopher Gomez. How are you doing today, gentlemen? Good, how are you guys? Good. <laughs> Excellent. I'm so, so, so looking forward uh, to seeing, hearing what you've all got to share here. So I want to go ahead and get started. I'm going to disappear here a few minutes and pass the baton to Sachiko, and we'll check in here with you in about 50 minutes or so, all right? Okay, thank you. All right, ja, Sachiko, yoroshiku. So we will start with a kampai, as appropriately, since we came prepared, I think. I have a bottle of Joyo. It's called Joyo from, it's the last remaining brewery um, in the city of Joyo in Kyoto. Uh, Tipsy, which is an online shop, is doing a, a launching a Kyoto campaign soon. So we were very very lucky to have this unique vintage um sake that i'm just showing that off though whoops and another um one from kyoto it says soku this is curated by richie houghton which is also part of the uh sake future 2020 summit but that's what i'm drinking i think nobuo san is also everybody's drinking something special yes what do you so let me see i have arizona homemade sake from <laughs> Arizona sake in Holbrook, Arizona. And this is a Navajo tea root. Actually, you could see maybe a tea stems. The color is almost frozen yellow to greenish. It's a sweet smell. It's a little spicy and then kanpai. <laughs> kanpai. And then Hanyato no Soma, what are you drinking? I'm drinking Dewa San San from Dewa Zakura. It's nice dry sake, it has nice uh, coconut note. If you eat with like steak, it tastes like chocolate, so it's amazing. Awesome, goodbye. Like chocolate, so I can't wait to taste it. Yeah. Chef, Chef David, you you actually have a otsumami too. <laughs> <laughs> that was very smart. You're, you're oh. getting us jealous. It's appropriately, you have something in front of you paired. I mean, there's a long day. I have to eat something, of course. But, but yeah, today we're having a sake from Fukushima. It's called Aizu Chushou. It's a tokubetsu bonjozo. Uh, and uh, it's a nice all day drinking sake, uh, all purpose, I think. We can be drinking, I don't know, with food, without food. Uh, today I have some uh, kana, which uh, we make here at Shibumi every January. Unfortunately, I have too much, uh, which I could share with all of you. So I'm just gonna eat it now with Chris. So come by. What is kanasumi for people that don't know and for a lot of people come by? It is it's called botarga. And it's a silver mullet fish that flourishes mm -hmm. in the winter time in Nagasaki. 
there's also other regions of Japan that has the, this fish, but Nagasaki is famous for having the fish this coming and has full of eggs in the wintertime. So it's dried and fermented? Salted. Not fermented, salted and then dried, and that's it. At Shibumi, before we, and then after we smoke it in cherry wood for about seven minutes, and now it's ready. Sounds delicious. Anything salty fish would go really well with sake for sure. Chris, what are you having? You're also uh, at Shibumi. It's awesome that we can see the background, um, the yeah. bar that you're usually behind. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now I'm in front of it. But <laughs> I'm just drinking Shichira Junmai. Just super nice. simple for me. In a very kind of cool glass, glassware. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's part of the big fun of service. It's from Chef David. He got it in Kyoto, so I get Yay. to spoil working here. All right, so I've been taking sips, but let's do a kanpai so we can start this off. Kanpai. Kanpai. Yay. Sorry, it's 8 a.m. in Japan, but um, so let's talk about this food and sake relationship. Um, sake and shochu, sake, which includes shochu too, um, where everybody in this conversation has had and enjoys um, sake along with Japanese food has come a long, long way in America. So back in the days, you know, this is a land where sashimi, the raw fish used to be poison. <laughs> and nowadays Japanese food is everywhere. Even, you know, in the middle of Indiana, people are having sushi and are introduced to Japanese food. Um, and uh, at Tipsy, which is an online shop. We like distribute or ship to every, you know, almost every state in America and every, everything that every, everybody starts with nigori, right? And then like flavored sake and what's, um, what's available. And then the journey that about learning about sake kind of goes from there. And then we have these culinary um, experts here today that have their unique take on the relationship between food and sake. So starting with Nobuo-san, who has Hi. been in the state for 40 years or so, um, works in a very quaint um, place in a way um, of Phoenix, Arizona. We wanna, we wanna hear from you what your take on sake and shochu is. Um, in your kitchen, how you incorporate sake and shochu in your program or how you create dishes? Like, what is sake and shochu to you? Well, um, I started out in the wine pairing for the last probably 20, 25 years. And uh, I happened to blow my mind. I didn't think it's sake with uh, I do a lot of rich style food, not just the Japanese style. I do uh, all uh, international with uh, uh, wine pairing. That's how I used to. And one time I was gonna bring sake in my uh, tasting menus is probably beginning or end of Kijoshu, something like that, not through the uh, dining. Uh, so it was a it was a challenge when you started this career. It was a challenge to incorporate sake because you were trying to entice people to have Japanese food or Japanese right. style food, right. and you would pair so, it with wine. Yeah. yeah, with wine. So it's just like a little challenge, and I didn't know what to do. And actually, the one day I tasted a um, very different, unique sake, it blew my mind. That kind of changed the shape. Mm -hmm. uh, sake could be pairing with a bunch of different stuff. And mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna start screen sharing here. Sure. Um, this is Nobuo at Teacher House. It's a really quaint place. It's a remodeled house, right? Well, it's not much remodeled. It's an original house building. Still eight. have, yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot of histories behind. Mm -hmm. But 
small kitchen is a challenge to do this uh, about 35 seating. And I have a counter mm -hmm. for Makase that's mm -hmm. like to do all the time. But uh, yeah, so I had a sake uh, from Japan. It's a uh, Tomi Sawa. And I thought Sawa sake will be that's me, but that's something changing on the Japanese sake. And I was so excited about it to open the bottle. And I, I found a photo of it, I think. Tell me if this is the correct yeah, one. Yeah, this is a Alamasa from Amaneko. Is this it? Yes, okay. that's it. And me and my wife, my wife's American. So she mm -hmm. okay with it. I told her, like, whoa, this is way too sour. Sake. Sake mm. should be sour. And I drank about a half and kept it in the refrigerator. Revisit on the next day to see any change or not. Actually, sake didn't change. My brain changed. I got reset of, huh, I said, just like wine. Then I started thinking, sake is changing with the pairing, what I thought about. It's gonna be so many out there, so I start to study and look for more what's out there. Mm -hmm. Then I do a lot of sake on the pairing, too. It's, it's so unique uh, beverage I should have knew a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And this is, you had this sake in Japan because it's, this is not available in, in America at the moment. Right. Correct. Right. Well, they bring yeah some souvenirs I get that sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, thinking about like the acid salt fat relationship, um, to my that food helps. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I have about eight different course of tasting menu, and a lot of them is a rich body stuff compared to I'm not doing too much Japanese Japanese uh, uh, dishes. So, uh, for example, this sour sake. It's contrast well with some rich food. Mm -hmm. And some sweet sake, I used to don't like sweet. I like dry, dry, just like wine too. But uh, then again, if you have something sour, we we'll make like a lime juice and I use fish sauce to make a ceviche. Think about that your tongue is shrink because so sour. Okay, sip a little bit of a sweet sake. Your tongue is gonna be changed back to uh, comfortable zone. Right away, people think, mm. oh, that's awesome pair. It's almost kind of like a, a no-brainer, but uh, it's interesting to wow to the guest with the pair with beverage, with food, not just on the food. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm gonna go to the next slide just so that I can share my experience at your place, but what you're talking about, is it kind of like um, what Chiba Marie-san talks about in food pairing, where it's like a puzzle piece, there's the there's a piece that's missing, and then there's a piece that that sake has, and when it, when it, when your hat, when it combines in your mouth, which is how Japanese people um, enjoy food, it, it like completes the dish kind of thing? Yes, I think, uh... Uh, that's why I was not too much in sake in the beginning because the wine, I, wine has a long, long tail, like 40, 50 seconds. Then if you get something fishy to not goes well, you have not good moment for a little longer. And mm -hmm. I was understanding sake would be short tail, so it's kind of off that fishiness, but actually sake does have some long tail too. So mm -hmm. in to do with, uh, uh, what you tasted and what you drink was sip sake to be stay happy in your mouth for long much as possible. That's the, my goal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's component, but sometimes it will be contrast. So that's what I like to do a uh, post meal to be up and down on the flavor of each beverage and also each food. So another one is have the uh, hinoki uh, little shredded. It, it, that makes you know, a lot of food has a lot of smell. Sake and wine has mm -hmm. a lot of smell. So smell and smell will be not a fun to have a contrast too. So like what you're saying, it's all puzzle to me. So very excited about what's going on on the sake. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and what nobuo sans talking about is this photo on the right. Um, it has some ogakuzu, which is some shavings of the cypress, Japanese cypress, or what people commonly refer to as um, Japanese cedar. And he soaked it in water 
to really bring out the aroma and it set the stage for this hinoki, which is like mm -hmm. the Japanese um, ono or a show, a tr very traditional show. And this was a coursed meal um, that was orchestrated this way, paired with all these amazing sake. And right in the middle, you see the Arizona sake, um, which is the, which was the number one sake in 2018. That was the first year that they had incorporated the American um, sake in a Japanese competition. Um, they got first prize and it's like a very inaka, very out in the boonies in Holbrook, Arizona. He's been collaborating and this sake kasu um, uses their sake kasu, correct? Yes, that's so that was, beautiful, yeah. Yeah, so building that like Well, and I just want to mention this one from the left, the second one from the left, because this is the meal that I got to enjoy, is marinated in natto, which is fermented soybeans that some some Japanese people can't have because it's so, um, the texture is very stringy and kind of like glue, but it's marinated in it so that there's no, none of that texture, but all the flavor of natto which is amazing to me. Um, uh, but not to take on too much time, um, there was a dish that you mentioned or sent a photo to me of this yoga guinea fowl yeah. um, and some pairing um, journey that you made. Can you give us an insight into how this like this pairing came about. This is the sake that you're drinking too, correct? Right. Yes. Uh, I have relationship with a bunch of different uh, vendors and Lalabom the local. Not everything. So one of the guys mm -hmm. who makes chicken and eggs, he bring over one day guinea fowl, and I never, you know, Japan. I think holo holo cho. Uh, I never used that before, and that gave me idea to see what I'm gonna do. And I end up to doing this, but uh, 18 different kind of spice brine and graze and uh, kind of like a Peking duck style almost, but uh, presentations and anything that I like to guest will be little supplies, you know, wow. And usually this kind of big spice, I like to pair with the uh, elastic uh, tea flavor, spicy Pinot Noir, uh, Burgundy. But uh, uh, now, Sakurai san, Arizona sake makes this Navajo blue tea, has a hint of a uh, uh, little medicine on the aftertaste and a little sweet in front, and uh, goes well to a bunch of different spice to cut down, I think. So that's what the uh, pairing is out. I know, and that um, reminds me, Soma, of what you were talking about with the taruzake. You had a tarazake and some pairing that you did and some inspirations that you were drawn to from it. Oh, you have the bottle. Awesome. I know. What did you try it with again? That was like sparking so this your... One, this one is salami. Like okay. a little bit cumin. Cumin, cumin. or like, you know, salami. Mm -hmm. Eat with this sake. Taste began uh, Japanese curry. Like flavor change, like super unique. Yeah, so I think with Japanese sake in Japan, you enjoy, you know, regularly you enjoy it with the ochoko, like drinking it in a wine glass is kind of a more of a modern way of drinking in Japan. But here, when you learn about sake, you're like taking notes, you know, Chris, you know this, <laughs> like you're taking notes, you're talking about anise, you're talking about baking spice, all these things that people aren't picking up when you get so intimate with the sake. And then that plays into the culinary world, I think, um, in America is what it seems like to me, which is actually really like going the really modern route of what's happening in Japan. Um, I'm going to start sharing a different screen now and go to Shibumi because I want to get some insight from uh, 
David Bassam. <laughs> Can you see the tuna now? David Bassam's tuna. Yeah. Okay, I just want to show this because I think Shibumi in downtown LA is amazing and badass and crazy at the same time. We're doing something like this, but you're always sort of attacking a, a very fully Japanese concept in um, the culinary sense that is very, very LA at the same time. So this is a question for David and for Chris, um, which is a, you work kind of side by side to do pairing and in different dishes. Like, so I think my guess from just looking through your Instagram is that your culinary journey or like when you start a dish, you start with the material, the sozai, what's available to you seek out the best um, ingredients first, and then you start with your creation. Am I, am I right? Yeah. We try to highlight, I guess, first Japan, but also we are in Southern California, which has some of the best produce in the United States. So we try to highlight those vegetables or products here, but also speaking about Japan as well. Or there's a more eel. So yeah, we have to highlight that eel because it's special and nobody can get it and we got it. So, so we, we served that. That was, that was a special day. I know. So with the tuna too, I mean, that's like at least 50 people or more feast of a tuna. Um, and yeah. you have, you were, um, you had your aha moment, I think, when you were, was it in Kyoto? Or when you were um, a chef in Japan is when you were inspired by um, some foods. But were there some aha moments in pairing? Um, did it happen before working with Chris? Or do you have any? Yeah, so a lot of the aha moments, I guess, with pairing, uh, a lot of the times comes with when I was having Chinmi. Um, and the chinmi is really Japanese way of expressing the arts of umami. Mm -hmm. and when you eat these chinmi, the akto aji, the aftertaste that you have with the sake, you really start understanding what Japan is about. And that's really what I fell in love with. Mm -hmm. And how do you take, Chris, how do you take um, what David has made, which is very, very, like to me is very Kyoto traditional, but also like very modern in its ingredients that he seeks out. Um, how do you go from there to pair it with sake and shochu? So you had mentioned that we work side by side, but we literally work side by side since we're a couple restaurant. I'm like, right on his right, right hand side. And we're just facing the guests. Um, and I start with his food first. And I just really had to delve into the world of sake and shochu because that really pairs best with the type of cuisine that we, we do here. Um, a lot of umami. I don't think a lot of wine can handle the type of food that we do. And sake and shochu at different temperatures work the best and really it's just from years of drinking years of drinking yeah. <laughs> to that. cheers, ah, cheers. There's, there's so uh, much out there that it's insane but there yes, are and when you're talking about like looking back, what's available today and what's a, you know, what was available five years ago is so different. Um, there's much more of such like elegant kimotos and um, exploration with the, not only like the vessels that you serve it with where Shibumi I think is amazing to offer like really one of a kind experience for all of your customers, but um, you have noticed that there's just a huge, like a wide range of things, things that drink like wine, 
like pops in acidity, like Nobuo-san was saying, to a really mild kimoto or um, kind of what I like to call oyaji sake, which is like a go-to thing um, for me. And then you had an opportunity to go to Japan to kind of appreciate your understanding of the culture firsthand. This is, uh, yeah. I guess you're not in this photo, but um, this is when you're mixing the, yeah. the kimoto, in, like, right? Yeah, yeah. But I got to go to Izumibashi and work there for a day. Mm -hmm. and that was really fun because they grow their own rice too. And yeah, as yeah. you were saying, like maybe just four years ago, five years ago, the selections you could get here socket wise were pretty mm -hmm. minimal. Like you had like a few big companies that brought really safe or really expensive socket. Mm -hmm. And now you have people bringing in really cool, funky, earthy um, socket with a lot of depth little more personality i think it's not for everybody I'll, but yeah i think, I think the, a lot more like sorry i just think that what's coming in now goes with more rustic stuff which is what we do here in a way kind of like not like all the natural wines that you have it's sort of like the um it's really in touch with the land yeah and I mean, um, a lot of the brewers are like that, so I don't really like to say like it's the same as like natural wine or natural socket, but like where Justin Potts used to work, uh, Kido Izumi, them, Terada Honke, and there, there's a bunch of really cool socket breweries that we're just starting to get in America now. Mm -hmm. And so as the front of the house, how do you, um, how do you use that experience to convey to the customer, because like we have the important role of um, conveying accurately, you know, what the product is and how much depth there is in understanding the product. I mean, <clears throat> first off, no one's gonna remember <laughs> any of this stuff because the the terms are in Japanese and they're just gonna remember the label and if they like it or not, or, or the experience or all the above. Uh, but I think, like me, I have to give guests the opportunity to drink different things because all they've had up until now is probably like hot sake, like really, really hot, bad sake, or something that's like not really memorable. And so, like, maybe doing a flight, or what we do here is like a beverage on the that pairs with the food, they get to try bunch of different types of sake and shochu. I love that shochu. I brought this up because this is a memorable moment for me when I was at Shibumi and you served a cocktail with um, this aged potato shochu. And then um, the kitchen staff was like, oh, wait, 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 we'll, we'll serve you something, a little nibble to go with that. And it was um, a dried sweet potato that they torched in front of me. And so those little moments of service and that collaboration for me is really what defines omotenashi or a Japanese way of pleasing the customer, um, which is sort of at the core of thinking about um, service and sake. And before we get too comfortable, I wanna start sharing about Tanyato as well, which is Soma's um, sake bar that opened after her Kamonegi creation. So Soma-san, oh, I have a different one here. I was gonna start with this. You are always doing these eclectic challenges and crazy things. Like you were recently, you did like 50 days of top ramen challenge and you know, of course became the champion. I think before that you had a Kewpie mayonnaise, um, uh, what is it, competition? Or is it a competition that you made on your own? And then now you're doing a hosomaki challenge so that you are, yeah. It kind of reminds me of like they're in America, there's this show called Top Chef and they always have like the junk food challenge where you have to make a create culinary creation with like junk food, like Snickers bars and things like that. But you are so like down the line of that. So like we want to, 
we want to get an insight into how you start with your creations, how sake and shochu plays into your um, your mindset and how you approach food. And I just have um, this photo, um, which is one of your one of the days of your creation, right, from the top ramen challenge. <laughs> Uh, top ramen fried rice. Top ramen fried rice. Yeah, <laughs> paired with paired with honkara from from uh, Eiko Fuji honkara from Yamagata Prefecture, which is very very dry but also like fragrant and clean. It's a honjozo. I loved that sake. So maybe walk us through what you go through because at Kamamegi, which is your soba restaurant, you go like to me. It's still very traditional base. You know, you, you hand make your soba every day, a couple times a day sometimes, and it's tempura, and you went to sushi school, <laughs> which are like the three culinary um, inventions of the Edo era, and you, you, you love shochu. Your daughter's name is Hibiki, so <laughs> we, we know how much you love Japanese beverages, um, but if you could walk us through what goes on in your head when you do your creations and what role sake and shochu has for you? So at Hanyato, I always think beverage first, then think how I can highlight this sake. Like example, I was talking about uh, Dewa San San. This has nice dry like coconut note. So I try to like make this taste like chocolate for it. So I make like a uh, fig dish, dry fig dish. And if you eat together, it tastes like chocolate in your mouth. So I just try to create like a wow moment, like how to like remember like this sake. Does that make sense? Yeah. So all the challenge I'm doing uh, myself, just looking for new combination, like what's new and eating this, eating this together makes what and what should people drink. And kind of like what Nobuo san was saying, like when you when when you break that barrier and step outside of what you think it should taste or what you think it should do is when it makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for. That's why like you you're trying to break a thousand rules to to have an aha moment for every dish is sort of my take on that. And then you have the, your newest creation the pairing for this one, which is your omachi rice sake. You say you, you're, I don't know if you're, you're writing this, but it's your favorite omachi rice mm -hmm. sake from Kuroshi. And then paired with your gyudon um, soaked tofu. So when you make gyudon, I sneak tofu inside while, you know, gyudon is cooking. Mm -hmm. And you take tofu out and eat with, uh, you know, karashi mustard and just drink. Then you finish meal with gyudon. It's utilizing yeah. pretty quick. And with the, I can only imagine with like the omachi, um, the depth of that sake rice coming mm -hmm. through, and you know the option of warming it up and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't believe we're running out of time. We have like ten minutes, including Q and A. But um, throughout this culinary journey that everybody is facing um, today, of course, with the pandemic and shutdowns and challenges in um, restaurants and services, this year has definitely been a challenge for everyone, um, changing gears and things like that. But I, I still think there's so much hope. And, and especially, you know, sake and shochu, which is not the most affordable beverage in America. Like you can go to Costco and buy <laughs> white wine in a box for a very, very affordable price. Um, but with America being the top export of sake right now, and then um, shochu being a hot topic amongst a lot of culinary experts and beverage experts in Japan, I think, or in America, I think there's a lot of hope um into the potential that this can this can lead to so if we can quickly um go over your hopes and aspirations for how sake and shochu can really um 
elevate the culinary experience in America. Um, I'd like to quickly do that, um, starting with Nobu san if you are available. Okay. Yes, sharing. like uh, we've been talking, the sake is changing so much, and like even Arizona makes sake too, but in Japan, it's a lot of younger generation. It's a lot of uh, out of box. And what happened is, I think it's America or any other country, they will accept it more than Japan. They like out of box. So I think it's sell sake shochu here, even Arizona, inland, it's a lot of potential. And I think I love to have that story with each bottle more than just a drink and food that has a memory stays in there for a long time. And once they get a those uh, wow moment for them, they'll trust us. And now we have to kind of share that passion to the guest. Hey, try this one, try this one. Uh, therefore, they open line and a lot of potential and I'm so excited about it. I know, it's like the, you know, it's because when you have that experience, that aha moment, it's so special that like trying to do that for somebody else is 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 um, just as as much rewarding, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. David Dosan and Chrisisan, what do you think about like the? We talked about kind of the now of sake and shochu in um, the like culinary programs in America, but how do you feel about? the future, what you would hope um, people take or like what happens or what direction we should really go to head towards. Chris, why don't you take it? I think people care a lot more about what they're putting into their bodies now, like the quality thing. Any market I go to, you see organic everywhere and people, they just care so much more. So rather than just grabbing something cheap, they want like the story, the experience. They just they want to get their money's worth, I think. And what better place than Shoshu and and Sake? Like these are like masters that have been doing this for a thousand years. Like some of them in the same family. And they they know what they're doing. And it tastes great. I hope to see more places like Nyato and Tira where you have like an experience. Because if I really wanted to, you could just grab a bottle at like a market of sake and it's okay. It's going to taste great. But the more memorable experiences that I have are with friends or at like great restaurants. And I, I do see the sake and shochu like evolving in America. Like like we said earlier that there are way more uh, in, uh, importers that are bringing stuff in and not just like what our uncles or dads or grandparents would bring in. It's not the old man sake that I like. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's still here and that has a place. I mean, I enjoy it too. I, I just like the variety that is available now. Yes, I think you hit the nail there that there's so much value that's behind each bottle that is just, you just can't ignore, I think. Mm. Um, does that go for food too, David? Like, are there more and more things that are available culinary wise? I know I didn't show the, um, the marijuana leaf tempura, which I was fascinated with <laughs> but I know you source you know um, really exquisite stuff from Japan is that trend helping you to like um, domestically I don't think there's more access than there was four years ago do you think yeah. there's more access to um, international products mm -hmm. that is something that we what kind of broaden yeah, certain uh, fish from Japan five years ago was, you know, just you had a couple companies. But now there's some more options for import of some very rare fish that you couldn't really get. Mm -hmm. Like the Moray eel, for example. Five years ago, there's no. Beautiful. 
you're not going to get that five years ago, ten years ago. Because mm -hmm. you can't even get that in Japan. So. But now there's just more access for food, for sure. So we can, it's like the possibilities are endless with the new yeah. type of sake and, and shochu and everything that's available. So, I'm sorry. Sorry. sorry, no, please, please. You, you just want sake to be more mainstream because that's what this is all about, really. But what we yes. have to realize is that wine is in the way. Wine is the competitor. It really, let's just, I mean, let's just talk about it. It just is. It's, I think it's that's a, yeah. Rare from everyone in any restaurant, it's wine. So how does accessibility? Yeah. In wine drinkers. What I think it's, they have to do is not charge much more than wine. That's the problem. The wine is handmade, mm -hmm. artisan made. They grow the fruits versus the sake brewery buys them, right? So the, don't tell me it's the same work. I mean, it's more work to make wine than to make a bottle of sake. I just think it is. It is. If you've ever been working on a winery, so then why is it cheaper? That's it. You should tell me. That's the problem. I think that's the big problem that we should talk about. The wine is just as much, but it's more money. Sake is just more money per bottle. So, and I, I think that's and they need to figure something out. I think accessibility, price, all these things come into play on um, what people reach reach for. But after somebody has an experience at, you know, Shibumi or Nobuo Teeter House or at Hamyato, people are definitely looking on the shelves a little bit more. And of course at Tipsy, that is our mission to make it more accessible um, and more mainstream. And we have to like ride this wave that is going up and and really um, like drive this culture, I think. Um, and then Sonasana, Hamuto. What do you think of the um, the future roles of sake and shochu? I know you don't serve shochu at Hanyato at the moment. You're focused on sake because there's still there's a lot to play with, and you don't you know need more. Not to say that we don't enjoy shochu and whiskey and everything else and wine together sometime, but what is your take on the future of um, sake and or shochu in- I think because of the internet, everyone is so close to each other, right? Like sharing information is much easier. Like uh, today I have everyone's aha moment, like, oh, I wanna go Nobu some place, like Shibumi and try this, this, this. So just sharing your like aha moment or like amazing pairing, like small thing is important, I think, by uh, social media. Yes, because we are limited to not being able to show it in person these days. So that does become key. And um, videos, I know you, ha you post um, simple recipes for people so that they can try it at home. We're obviously doing this over Zoom because we are limited to, to being, you know, in the same place at the same time. So I understand that. And Justin San, sorry, I we have like one minute or less than one minute for questions if there's any. There's just so much more to cover with amazing talent in, in one Zoom. Um, sorry that I have like one minute, but if there's any questions, please pose it our way. Jeff, can you bring it back to the studio? But thank you for everybody. Oh, should we do the last compare too? Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you so much. We got them in here with us? Oh, we got everybody? Yes. <laughs> we got everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so Thanks. much, everybody. Yeah. I mean, as far as questions, I mean, we, uh, we didn't have a whole lot going on in the chat, but I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, just straight up, you've got it. You were talking about, you know, sort of accessibility. You know, you're getting access to more ingredients. You're getting access to more different things. What gets you excited? Like right now, if you've, if you've got a bottle of sake, you've got customers, you know, if you can open up tomorrow, you know, everybody's looking for an experience. What is, what, what's, what's got you excited? I mean, for, how about the Shibumi guys? David, 
Christopher? Why not? Uh, me? Well, if we were open tomorrow, I mean, then I guess we would start by just starting a huge party. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Like, I don't know how to promote Sunday. I mean, yeah. everyone's in fucking production mode right now, so I don't know. We can, I don't know, maybe do a live Zoom thing with a brewer or something like that. Maybe Chris could help us out. Has, I mean, ob obviously it's incredibly challenging right now with everything being down and, you know, unable to do it, you know, what you're used to doing every day. Is there anything in, in sort of the nature of the setup of things right now? I, I imagine some of you are, you know, experimenting with takeout and other different types of service. How are you looking at maybe your role or how you can facilitate people's, you know, relationship with your food and then with sake sort of in the current circumstance? Is there anything that... You know, Soma was just talking about the use of the internet. Are how, are these tools lending anything to you in any way that you feel like has uh, been really substantial? Yeah, I think so. Right? Like, everyone's staying home right now, so people watch more SNS, like social media. So, like, I start following, like, sake, sake pairing hashtag. And I see like lots of new recipe, uh, recipe and idea. It's yeah. really fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, and I've with... actually enjoyed um, at Shibumi because they were forced to do takeout only. Their bento creations with the sake pairing that um, Chris would choose, like their sh shimesaba and the um, senking omachi mm -hmm. and stuff. Like for me. As a as a bystander or you know as a customer, it's like wow you know like we we would not be able to see a culinary bento creation from these amazing chefs mm. unless it was this time. So I, as as much as it's unfortunate, it, it still really excites me to see new creations that you wouldn't you know in a different context because their talent can go like in many ways mm. and show. Okay amazing things for me. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, you know, thank you so much, all of you, for making time this morning or this afternoon. I, I said these time zones are messing with me all over the place. Um, that was absolutely fantastic. I am very, very eager. I say, you know, we're doing okay. We're not exactly suffering over here in, in Japan. We've got access to a few good things, but I'm so eager to get on a plane here really soon and, and head to the West Coast and pay you all a visit. Um, that was, you know, thank you so much for making time. I recognize how, you know, challenging things are right now. How can, how can we help you? What, what do you guys just, you know, sake and stuff like that aside, you know, in just given the, circ the state of things right now, what can our viewers, our listeners, what can people do to help you right now? Is there, a, uh, of course, you know, if you're in the area, of course, take out, but is there anything that you, ladies and gentlemen need or that anybody listening here can do to support you guys? Mm, Chris? Chris? I, I mean, I think supporting your local business is the number one thing to do right now. Uh, but I love what you're doing with this, Justin. Like, we're, everyone's pretty much at home right now. So just spreading the knowledge so when we can come together again, we can just be in person and share all this physically. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I said again, thank you so much, all you guys, for making time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, there's only so much we can do here, you know, via video stream. But um, I, I can't wait until, you know, we're going to come up with another opportunity here. This is the first summit. We're sorting this stuff out. Um, we're going to keep working on different ways to kind of bring people together. Um, and I love that I, you know, jumping from Shibumi, from Shibumi to Hanyato to Teeter House, you know, I imagine you all didn't have the time or resources to be able to do that before. And so this sort of cross pollination, um, I'm just super honored um, that we're able to just even put you all in the same space, even just for an hour. Um, and I hope that, you know, it really generates something for all of you um, and that, you know, you can you know, of course we can support you and consumers can support you, but I hope it, you know, helps facilitate a way you guys can support one another as well. Um, and I just want to, yeah, just say thank you, um, cause, you know, given everything that's going on, I just really appreciate it. Um, and Sachiko, thank you so much for, um, 
putting all the, uh, bringing all these wonderful folks together. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. And I have to add just for that um, supporting local businesses. Um, local businesses is, you know, like where the heart is and where they are um, showing you each and every product with an experience. So even like during this hard time, it, it is very, really important to pay attention to what local businesses are doing, where they need help. You can buy sake from Tipsy, of course, which is, you know, easy, you cook it. Um, but the knowledge that people are spreading also, like Tipsy can't carry um, namazake, but all these local places can. Yeah. And uh, namazake, which is unpasteurized and not, not really um, shippable. Yeah. So, like right now, especially, it is really, really important. Please su support local businesses as much as you can. Just pay attention to what they're saying or reach out. You, you know, anything is going to help, I think, right now. It, as much as it might help, you know, hopefully it helps shochu and sake makers in Japan for every bottle that you purchase. So, I think um, that's how you can support. <laughs> Absolutely. Drink more. <laughs> yeah, right. Drink more. At the end of the day, that's about, that's about the extent of what we can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, it absolutely. Is. You know, it thank is. you so much. Uh, uh, Nobuo san, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Soma san, David, thank Christopher, you. thanks thank so much you. for um, getting together with us here uh, this afternoon. Satchiko, thank you for a fantastic session. I look forward to seeing you all uh, on the West Coast uh, and in the desert as well <laughs> in Phoenix here um, very, very Hi. soon. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.